Hello and welcome everyone. I am Pratik here. I work as a software engineer here at Newsgrad. So uh, today we have an interesting agenda at our hand. We are going to talk about very interesting topics here. Uh, this is going to be a two part video. In the first part, I'm going to talk about how to run your application inside the Docker container. And then in the second part, we're going to talk about how to deploy it to an AWS server. So it's going to be very interesting and let's get started. Today, I'm going to run this simple two testing application made with ExpressJS and sockets inside a Docker com container. The video for this application was posted a few months ago in our Facebook page. If you haven't, please go check that video first. The link is in the description. So for this application, uh, for running this application inside a Docker container, firstly, you'd have to install Docker, obviously. So here are the steps for installing Docker. Uh, I already have Docker installed in my PC, so I'm not going to install it again. And they have step-by-step -step guide for installing it. Once you have downloaded Docker, go to your project. In the root of the project, create a new file and name it docker file so basically a docker file is a set of instructions uh, based on which docker will build a docker image so let's see what type of instructions can be stored in a docker file so we can write from node 6.10.2 so we want to install the version uh, 6.10.2 of node uh, so this command would basically pull a node image of 6.10.2 version uh, from docker hub so docker hub is basically a github for docker images where you can build your image and then push it there then we can write add uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain what this does so this basically copies your current directory, your project directory, to code folder inside the Docker container. Okay, So why we would need that? We would need that for adding the codes inside the Docker container. Then uh, I have, so I have package.json file inside the code directory. So I can just run npm install. So what this does is this run command executes this npm install uh, shell command basically. So you can write anything here. You can write uh, any shell command inside this run keyword. So we're gonna stick to npm install. Then uh, we're gonna install pm2. globally so we would need pm2 for starting our application for accessing it then we would expose 3000 port so our application uses the port 3000 for communication so we are going to expose the 3000 port inside the container then we would execute the entry point command so what the entry point does is it basically starts a command it runs a command when you run the container so we would write uh, pm2 docker app.js this would start app.js using the pm2 docker command so when we are dockerizing there are mainly two steps one is building an image and then starting a container from that image so entry point command is basically ran when the container is starting from the image. But the difference between run and entry point is that run is executed when you are building the image. And entry point command will be executed when you are running the container from the Docker image. So this would conclude our necessary Docker file for this project. So now we have to execute this Docker file. So the command would be docker build. So what 
it would do is it would search for a docker file in the current project directory so it would search for a, a docker file inside this directory if it finds a docker file it would execute this set of steps we have declared in the docker file uh, then we can add some additional parameters like minus t node twitter stream so what it do, it would do is it would assign a name to this image that's going to be built from the docker file we can also add a tag so we can add latest so by default if we don't declare latest uh, docker would assign the latest tag to the image name uh, we can also assign any number so if you say want to build separate versions of your project you can say 1.0 then for another version you can say 1.1 then 1.2 so on for the first time running the docker build would take some time because it's gonna download the base image from docker hub so the size of the base image is quite huge so uh, it's gonna take some time depending on your download speed but once you have downloaded the image for the first time it wouldn't uh, take much time for the subsequent tries because uh, you have already downloaded the image the image is downloaded locally so it's gonna check for the file locally first if it finds it then done it would skip to the next step if it doesn't then it's going to download from docker hub so uh, each step here is basically a layer for docker once you have uh, run the docker file it's going to assign a hash number for each layer so if you say if you have uh, changed this one then it would delete that hash and generate it again and it's going to add the code and assign a hash number this way it's going to complete all the steps with the hash number then again if you run it would check if there are any changes to the previous step if there are any changes changes it's going to clear the cache and then run the step again and all the steps below but it, if it doesn't find any changes it's going to skip to the next step and then check if there are any changes if it doesn't find any changes again then it's going to skip that step too so uh, subsequent tries of docker build are really fast only the first time it's going to take some time so it's time let's build our very first docker image so it's going to take a little while to complete uh, see you on the other side We have built our very first docker image so if we see docker images yeah we have uh, our node tweet stream image here so uh, it's it has assigned the latest tag with it also you can see we have the node 6.10.2 image so uh, this one is basically from are uh, downloaded from docker hub the node base image and this one is our uh, application uh, so as i said earlier if we run this step again let's see like it was done instantly because nothing changed so each step had its own layer protected so it just checked if there are any changes to the there uh, as there are, were no changes it skipped that step and then done successfully now if we check docker images here you could see like it's the same it didn't change anything so now it's time to run our docker container from our docker image for running our uh, container we would write the command docker run so dash p so this would like uh, bind our host port to the container port the host is your local machine so we have exposed 3000 in our uh, docker file so we are gonna bind 3000 with 3000 uh, then we're gonna say which image to run the container from which is node twitter stream and the tag would be latest so let's run it so we got an error that says like pm2 docker unexpected operator so uh, there was a mistake in our uh, docker file is that entry point doesn't accept single quotes it has to be double quotes 
and we also have to set the work dir that's code so basically what work dir uh, does is it sets the current working directory to slash code inside the docker container okay so uh, let's uh, build it again uh, as you can see uh, it's running npm install again so uh, what's the reason for it so uh, the reason for it is i change the docker file here so uh, it's adding it's found some changes inside that second layer so it would build this layer and all the layers again so uh, that's problem uh, we can um, refactor this docker file to uh, get around this problem so let's see how we can change this docker file to uh, uh, get past this problem of building uh, so downloading these npm packages again and again and again okay so first of all what i would do is add the package.json so we i would copy this package.json file to temp directory of uh, the docker container uh, sorry docker image and then i would run npm install sorry uh, i would cd into temp and npm install so i'm going to install the contents of the package json before adding the code so what it do, does uh, it would do is uh, it would install the npm packages in a separate layer in a, a layer above the code layer so any changes to this layer wouldn't affect the um, earlier layers and also i would move this above the code adding uh, then i would add code and uh, run cp minus r so uh, after running the npm install i would get a, f a directory called node modules so i'm gonna copy the node modules folder inside code directory okay so then i would expose then keep this same so uh, if i have any changes inside the code layer this layers won't be affected the but this layers would be so uh, but that that's not a problem because these steps are pretty fast so we you pro probably wouldn't even notice but downloading uh, npm packages uh, from the internet it's going to take some time because uh, the internet speed of our uh, we have it's not that fast so it's going to affect and uh, it's going to take quite a few minutes to download all the packages again so let's uh, let's run the docker build command again so for the first time it's going to run everything again but for later part if you have any changes inside our code it's not going to affect the uh, above layers so let's wait till the downloading is done So as you can see, the downloading is done. Uh, if we build again, it's not gonna take some much time. So let's see. We let's say we change the this again. So uh, let's edit here. Run ls minus la. So it's gonna uh, show you what are the uh, contents of the code directory. So so let's run it again. As you can see, it didn't install again because these steps are above the code changes but it did affect the uh, below layers, but you probably didn't even notice because those two steps are small. As you can see, uh, these are the contents of the code directory. That's basically the same uh, with our current project directory. So uh, maybe should avoid that. No. Okay, so let's build again. So build is done. Now let's run it. So we didn't get any error. That means uh, the 
container is running. So let's see, localhost 3000. So there we go. We have our very first Dockerized application. Uh, so let's uh, stop the container from running. So it killed the process and now let's uh, refresh it again. As you can see, the site cannot be reached because the server is turned off. If we restart it again and then refresh, yeah, we have the application back again. So it's uh, safe to say that our Docker container is running. Uh, in the next part of this series, we're going to talk about uh, pushing your image to a repository. Uh, so we're going to see some amazing AWS services uh, that we're going to uh, ha work hands on, uh, such as uh, il uh, Elastic Container Service, that is uh, ECS. So uh, it's going to be very, very interesting. So see you on the next video.